Hello, Shauna. Thank you very much uh, for being here with me. Um, I will introduce you to everyone that is watching. Um, here is with us PhD Shauna Shapiro. She's a best-selling author, professor, clinical psychologist, and internationally recognized expert in mindfulness and self-compassion. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, well, myself, I'm Emilio Goldenhurst, psychologist and co-founder of MindCoTeam. Uh, we work as a digital therapy to help people change their habits. Um, well, Shauna, and you know, I, I, I love the work you do. I, I, I follow since I'm also in mindfulness, but I would love to hear from your perspective, you know, how you can define mindfulness and, and your approach to it. Mm, yeah, so mindfulness, um, first of all, is different than meditation. That mindfulness is a way of being and meditation is kind of a practice we do to cultivate or strengthen mindfulness. But the word mindfulness means to see clearly. And we want to be able to see clearly what's happening so we can respond effectively. And that's why mindfulness is such an effective practice and tool for addiction, because it can be practiced moment to moment so that when there are urges or when there's kind of a reactive pattern, mindfulness can start to break it up because we're learning how to be present in our lives and to meet each moment. Wow, that, that, that led me a lot of thinking. Um, you know, one thing that you said that is really nice and really important, I think, and, and I would love to hear also what you think about it, is in addictions or when usually we do something that we, we know we don't want to do and we keep on doing it, we usually tell ourselves or that we are doing something wrong. We, you know, punish ourselves. And, and how does it, you know, my, how does mindfulness can work on that and, yeah. and to reverse that, that way? This, this, is such, this is such an important question. And it goes back to your first question, which is what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is about paying attention, right? That's the most important thing is that, in fact, I think it's our most important resource is our attention. It's not time. People say it's time, but it's our attention. But mindfulness is also how you pay attention, paying attention with kindness, with curiosity. So to get back to your point, when you make a mistake or you do something you didn't want to do, what we tend to do is we beat ourselves up. We shame ourselves, we guilt, we judge. What happens when we do this, when we judge ourselves, is the centers of the brain that have to do with learning shut down. So we literally kind of rob ourselves of the resources we need to change. What's interesting is when we bring kindness and compassion to ourselves, which is part of mindfulness, it turns on the learning centers of the brain it turns on the motivation centers of the brain and it gives us the resources we need to change. So mindfulness involves paying attention with kindness and curiosity. And that turns out to be this incredibly effective and powerful tool for making changes in our life. And first, thank you again, you know, like every time I, I listen to you, but, and, and I have a, I, one thing, you are a, big researcher you you have more than 150 scientific articles on mindfulness so you know what is the evidence that you found about this we shut down some part the other parts remains active something takes control because it's very similar to what addictions looks like from that brain perspective Absolutely. And, and thank you. Yes, I am a scientist. And this is not just be nice to yourself and it will work. Um, what happens is when we feel shame or this kind of sense of self-judgment, the amygdala, which is kind of the seat of our emotions and fear, it, it signals this cascade of norepinephrine and cortisol to flood our system. And it basically shuttles our resources um, from from into into survival pathways from our learning pathways into survival pathways and it literally shuts down our ability to see clearly and to learn from our mistakes and kindness on the other hand does the exact opposite um, both kindness and curiosity these attitudes they um, turn on the learning centers by kind of bathing our system in dopamine 
which always gets a bad rap in addiction because dopamine, of course, is, is what causes the addiction, but dopamine just turns on our motivation and our reward centers. And kindness and curiosity do that too. And so then we become motivated to change. That change actually feels good. When we try to beat ourselves into change, it doesn't feel good and it doesn't work. I read that compassion and kindness, maybe compassion a little, if it's better defined, it's already within us, right? And, and these probably learning centers are also the ones that are closing those doors in a way to the compassion that is already living within us, right? So it's a very hard and difficult world to learn how to, to, to detach from all the learnings that are shutting down our compassion to learn the new ones or the ones that we already are born with it. So what kind of suggestions or, you know, or, or exercises yeah. or... So, so I think you're making some really important points. And I think the first one is that this compassion, this kind of good heart is already here within us. And it does get a little covered over when we just get overwhelmed, right? By the suffering either in ourselves or in our world. And I think one of the keys to mindfulness is that it lets us see things clearly and then to practice our compassion. And what's really interesting is this is new research out of um, Europe. They found that this was at the University of Zurich in Switzerland, that when people feel empathy, so when you kind of see someone in pain, like someone stubs their toe and you're like, oh, ow, it lights up the pain centers of the brain. Now, when you see someone stub their toe and your mirror neurons help you feel the empathy, and then you change it into compassion, how can I help, Right it lights up the reward and the positive centers of the brain. So what we need to practice is feeling empathy. That's normal. That's how we know there's pain with ourselves and others, and then transmuting it into compassion. How can I help? And I think in the addiction world, this is essential. When we feel ourselves in pain, which is why people, this is what leads to addiction, is to feel that pain. And then instead of being our enemy, Instead of beating ourselves up, we become our own ally and we say, oh, sweetheart, you're feeling really lonely right now, or you're scared, or you're sad. And we bring the same compassion to ourselves that we would bring to a dear friend. And this is a practice. You know, you asked what practices. This is not something like a light, you know, switch and you're like, okay, now I love myself and I'm kind to myself. This is something we do every day. And one of the miracles of neuroplasticity is the fact that we can literally re-architect our brain through repeated practice. And so the practices that I teach, I have a new book out called Good Morning, I Love You, Mindfulness and Self-Compassion Practices to Rewire Your Brain. And the practices I teach in this book are basic science-based practices we can do every day to cultivate this mindfulness and this compassion for ourselves and for each other. And, and it's not something that happens overnight. It's planting seeds and eventually they blossom. It's lovely. It's definitely lovely. Um, and I'm happy for, for all the people out there that can also read a, and learn from your book. And when you were talking about that, you know, in, in the digital therapy that we created, um, we also encourage that it's all about practice because we are, again, teaching this kind of mindfulness-based uh, uh, exercise that are a daily practice. It's something mm -hmm. that you do have to, you know, bring on into your life. And when you were talking about being around people and sometimes we have the, the, the gaze of other people, you know, pointing at, at us because I, I am smoking or I shouldn't be and, and I feel that shame or I feel that guilt. Mm -hmm. One of the, the I think I, I, we, we, I showed you this before, but one of the things that we have is this recreation in virtual environment of that kind of scene, that kind of moment that you get triggered. So how do you think this kind of merging between oh, a possibility to get triggered of all this that can happen in real life while being um, guided 
through, with a narrative of mindfulness. Yeah, I think that's really one of the geniuses of your program is combining exposure therapy, right? Which is those moments when we get triggered and they might lead us to our ad addictive behavior, combining that with the mindfulness practice. So we can start to notice our body getting aroused. We can start to notice our mind getting unsettled. And right in that exact moment, we can choose a different pathway. And it's really in that space between the, the trigger and our response. It's that space that makes all the difference. And in that space lies our freedom to choose our response. And in our response is, is our integrity and our, our desire and our vision for our life. And it's so important that people do that with compassion instead of shame and that they make these choices out of self-love instead of self-hatred. I love that. And I love the difference between doing it by choosing and doing it by reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, this automatic pilot that is not just in addictions. I, I mean, everyone, you know, everybody of us goes in automatic pilot. So this space that probably we don't sense to be able to actually feel it and, and to choose from there, I think it's, it's, it's magical. And how would you say that is, what is the, the main difference that you would, you know, see from either research or practice as well that goes with and without this self-compassion uh, uh, action? So there's two things. First is to be able to make a choice. We have to get out of the automatic pilot mode right? That mode of just kind of doing and going because when we're there, we're kind of, it's like we're on a super highway of habit and we're just going down those same pathways that we've gone our whole life. And what we're talking about here is kind of picking the brain up and carving out new neural pathways. I call these little country roads. They're not as fast as the super highway, but every time we choose to go down that path, we're strengthening right? And so whatever you practice is going to grow stronger. And so the key is really to reflect deeply on what do I want to grow, right? What do I want to grow? What do I want to feed in my life? And then to do it with compassion, to know that we're not going to do it perfectly. And so what I invite my patients to do is to try to kind of have a, a direction instead of a destination to say, can I do this 5% more, right? Can I be 5% kinder to myself? Can I take care of myself 5% more? And so it's not about an all or none. It's all, not about perfection. It's really about setting the compass of our heart in the direction we want to go and then staying committed and focused to that direction. I love that. It's like, watering your plant you know every single day okay. you yeah i love the growing makes you stronger sentence as well um i appreciate shana all the beautiful um you know words that you shared with me and with everyone watching i think that there is a lot to practice and a lot uh to also focus on this uh, inner destination that we want to 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 start uh, focusing as well right yeah and i'd say one last thing emilio that i think is so important for everyone who's watching and listening is science shows that all of us have the capacity to change that it's never too late no matter what mistakes you've made no matter what your past no matter what your current circumstances are all of us have the capacity to rewire our brain. This is what modern neuroscience shows us. And the key is to begin. There's a beautiful um, line by Kabir and he says, wherever you are is the entry point. So we begin wherever we are and know that it's possible. We cannot end this conversation in a better way. <laughs> thank you very very much i really appreciate it and i love that you know every single step is now mm, thank you thank you shauna thank you very much